this year, and uh, I got this uh, compilation of videos that are uh, pretty much un I've got a, a ton of unused um, videos uh, recorded way back forever ago. <laughs> so a lot of it's from way back when I recorded stuff in 2012 and that. Um, quite a lot of boring stuff, but <laughs> yeah. I just I want to kind of talk about some of these games and that, like uh, MGO2 here. Um, I really loved the, the gameplay of MGO2 way back when it was still active. It's not active anymore. It, um, closed down way back in 2012, uh, at the end of near mid June, I think. And uh, it's unlike any other uh, shooter game out there, really, because. You could pretty much either kill the enemy or knock them out to win the game or something, depending on whatever the round is set at. Choo! And knocked out like that. <laughs> so it all comes down to luck, how good you are at the game and that. It does take some skill to to achieve great things when you're playing the game. And as you can see there, you can just wake them up just by tapping on their backs. And MGO3 where you just have to like kick your opponents to, to wake them up and stuff like this. And this part here where it's coming up, you can actually hold up people as well in this one, which is quite good. So I don't think you ac can actually do that in MGO3, which is kind of sort of missing from, from the game really. <laughs> a lucky hands up sort of thing there. <laughs> so pretty much just got a tranquilizer pistol trying to knock out the enemy. And I took a lucky random shot there and knock him out to win the round. <laughs> Pretty much won that round myself, really, but it takes me forever to remember what. It's been, it's been forever, so it's hard to remember what I did in these rounds and that. <laughs> and what I was thinking at the time, trying to get these. Try, when I was playing this game and stuff like that. Unique characters are pretty good as well. I love how they got more unique characters than what they do in MGO3. I, I do believe they are adding more characters to MGO3 soon, but I'm not sure when. <laughs> I did see announcements for it. So I'm playing as Liquid Ocelot, uh, which is Ocelot, really, <laughs> playing as Liquid. And he's, he's got a few skill tricks of his own. Like he's, he's got a skill of Guns of the Patriots. He could pretty much lock you from <laughs> firing your own weapons and stuff like that. But just by pointing your fingers at it and go bang bang. Or... Stupid funny but... <laughs> and pretty much just uh, team sneaking. Which is sort of like um, capture uh, thing. I forget. <laughs> and you pretty much get knocked out most of the time and nobody helps you to get up. And you're just left to fend for yourself. Even though it's pretty risky. Uh, the game the game mode on MGO3 is similar to Team Sneaking here. Um, data recovery discs uh, is on MGO3, I think. Yeah, I think so. And only the uh, attackers have um, stealth camouflage. In MGO3, they've, they've added thing there. <laughs> they get stabbed. Let's watch that replay one more time. Ba boom And again. And again. One more time. Yeah. Up. You get the idea. <laughs> and here we go at another uh, another round here. The last one standing in the round. Trying to be sneaky. Getting up into the clock tower. I pretty much liked all the names of the of each map that they had in MGO2 because it was always a double letter. <clears throat> so you'd have like mid Midtown Millstorm or uh, Urban Ultimatium, uh, Inbound Inferno and stuff like that. And of course you've got idiots trying to restart the round when it's, when it's near the end of the round and stuff like that. I never seem to use the iron sights very much in this game. No idea, we are, no idea why I didn't but it's just one of these things where I just always using uh, TPS instead of FPS to take out good accurate shots to the head. Pretty much just like doing that instead. 
This person trying to get up the ladder. <laughs> trying to be sneaky to get up. And you just take him out. Boom. <laughs> Look about. Take some health off of him. <laughs> but unfortunately, I fail. <laughs> As I sort of get taken out. Just right here, I think. Yep, there you go. Bye bye. Plunk. <laughs> the skills are a um, pretty good thing to talk about in this one as well. You could change them anytime you want in MGO2, which was a good thing. MGO3 doesn't let you do that. You have to always go back to the free play mode to, to change it, which is kind of annoying, really. And you've got to set certain skills for each loadout stuff. Which is rather annoying. You do get loadouts on MGO2 as well, but you're not confined to locking them into one thing and not being able to change it like an MGO3 does. But each skill takes a lot of time to uh, to unlock each each level of the skill. Say for example, like box three, you got to sit in the box for like three hours to unlock that skill, <laughs> and. You can pretty much select what which team you want to go into as well on this. <laughs> and pretty much what everyone wants in MGO3 is the uh, text chat thing as well. And of course you get to select any type of, ki kind of weapon you want to use in this game as well. Without having to resort to switching to what loadout or character you're using. Which is what it should be in, M in MGO3, but it's not. The grenades as well, they've got like that little number stuff on them, so you can see how far you're going to throw it. They don't even have that in MGO uh, 3. And you get a sneaky grab at this person by sneaking up and taking him out with a grab. <laughs> Choke him out. That's pretty much what you did really. Sneak up, grab, choke, knock out. <laughs> And pretty much uh, training, you can train with other people online, or you can, you can just um, train by yourself with uh, practice uh, targets that move around, and you got dolls. You see pretty much all the, the levels that you, that you get for the maps, just the outer outlets, which is quite one of my quite favourite ones, I think. Besides Alt Urban Ultimatum and uh, the Warehouse one. Some of them are quite good maps, some of them are not, but just depends. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you get all the customizations and stuff for your weapons and select out types you want. As well as support weapons, selecting whatever you want to use. The C4 is quite good. You can stick them to enemies, which I'll probably show in a little bit. You can try to grab them. And if you don't have the CQC skill, you can't grab hold them. You can only chuck them to the ground and that. And there's a demonstration of box 3 skill. If you have box 3 skill, you can pretty much just ram people with that. And yeah. So, boom! Try to knock them out with that. Probably not as good as the uh, MGO3 MGO version, where you can just like slide into them and then tap the run button to knock them out. <laughs> And uh, you got run skills in this as well, so it changes how fast you, you walk or run, as you see. And you've got the auto lock, well, auto aim, so you can lock on targets, which you can enable at any time just by holding down the uh, square button, I think. I can't remember which button. It's been forever. <laughs> I have seen that there is hacks to like uh, bring MGO 2 back. Onto MG onto uh, PS3 to play. I saw a post somewhere online how to actual hack the game or whatever. Had to download some ISO or whatever. Haven't been able to do that myself, but I might look forward to trying to do that sometime in the future when I can. Just to get a chance to play this thing again and get a knife in this game, which is they're soon to be adding to MGO3. Which some people have been requesting for it to be added. I kind of don't like it because it kind of just leads people to just want to knife everyone all the time, which is rather annoying. Because MGO2 had a lot of rooms where all weapons were disabled except for knives, and just want to stab each other to death and that. 
It's also got the, the stun function. I'm not sure if they will have the stun function in MGO3 when they bring it to that. And of course the recovery, you just got to tap them on the back to wake them up and stab them for no reason. <laughs> wake them up and stab them. Yeah, sh boom, sh moving targets. And of course you got the friendly fire, which is very useful. It's pretty good in MGO2, you can pretty much... You can, if it was friendly fire was enabled, you can stun or kill your uh, teammates, which wasn't really allowed, but if you, did, if you did it a number of times, you just get kicked from the game automatically. And of course, uh, MGO3 sort of has that, kinda. Not really. You don't really have any options to turn uh, friendly fire on or off. If, uh, well, there is some instances where you can kill them. And here's the C4 I was talking about earlier. So you can pretty much just stick them on their back, walk away, and explode them. <laughs> Which is quite a, a good tactic when you want to just blow them up for no reason. Quite love that kind of thing. You just go up behind them and stick it on their back. I don't know if you can actually do that in MGO3, but it would be a nice something seeing. Footprints! <laughs> anyway, just sticky a C4 to his back and run away. And of course, you can if you've got the CQC skill equipped, you can grab them and stick a C4 on, onto their backs as well, which is nice. And sticky C4 on his back, even though he's on his own, on the same team. <laughs> and go boom, ba boom. The SOP lock with the thing was quite interesting. MGS2. Uh, I kind of want to do a, a full let's play of this one, but I want to start from the very beginning with the MGS1. MGS1 isn't really the very, the very, very beginning. I know the Peace Walker is in chronolog chronological order, but I would like to do a let's play from MGS1. I do MGS2 and 3. And there's funny little gags in MGS2 you can do, like this. Just uh, knocking on the posters, either in the face or down in the crotch, <laughs> right like that. Funny, but silly things. There's a ton of little funny, silly things in this game, I think. A number of them, which I'll probably show in a full let's play of this game. <laughs> Pretty much know the game inside out, almost. And, if, uh, and repeat the same thing over there. Same poster. It's pretty much any of the, the female model posters, really. <laughs> Funny stuff. Key. And you've got guard in the thing. And then we've got the codec thing here. Shit. What do you Shoot. think you're doing, Snake? You don't have enough to keep you busy. <laughs> Try to remember the mission if you can. He doesn't have to remember the mission. <laughs> uh. And uh, shoot the thing for no reason. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> of course, the guards. You just stick in the in the lockers, and do stuff. And like this one, I like how you can shoot the radios on this one. Like Phantom Pain and that. I don't know why they removed the option of shooting radios because they can still call for backup and stuff like that, and call for full alerts. Just by spotting you instantly, it's like, oh, it's you, there you are, uh, alert mode, because we didn't call for backup or anything like that, just like, we didn't need to radio for anything, it's just like, instant alert, which I didn't, which I don't really like in uh, the Phantom Pain on Ground Zeroes. They should have kept it where it was like, how to have it in this game, where they have to radio for, for backup Freeze. to cause an alert. Freeze. And, uh, Stuff like that. <laughs> so, take them out. Ba 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 boom. Ba da boom. And of course, there was force alerts in MGS1 and MGS2, which you have to do anyway. So, of course, it doesn't really count towards actual alerts caused by the player themselves, which was a good thing. Because if you're trying to go for a no alert run, then <laughs> it's no good if you're into. If, you, if you're given forced alerts and stuff like that. Some pretty good shots. <laughs> Some good tactics for uh, taking out the enemies. And take them out. Game over. 
Stones. I can't remember what difficulty level I put this on, but I think I must have put it on like normal or extreme or something like that. Uh, <laughs> of course I can't check what level of difficulty I put it on last time, but depending on the difficulty, the grip isn't great, as you can see there. Instant game. Love messing with the guards in the areas. <laughs> Accidental alerts. Like that. <laughs> do 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 do. And knock them down like dominoes. <laughs> it's so funny to watch them fall down like that. That's what I love about this this game in particular. I think it was one of my first few favorite PS2 games, or one of the first few PS2 games I ever played. Uh, it was quite fun. Messing around and stuff like that. Kaboom! <laughs> but you can't see me! But I don't... Again! Gosh! Gosh! <laughs> What's going on, Snake? Ah! <laughs> uh... <laughs> but that's the front! Uh... But that's to your front. But anyway, I think I'll just leave all that there. So, I'll make more of these compilation videos just for watching. So, yeah. Hope you like watching this and I'll make some more. See you next time. Bye bye.